Hey guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this adorable mini duffel bag. When I was young, I remember my sister had a purse that resembled this design and it was so trendy back in the early 90s. I loved it so much. This is so cute as a purse or a little duffel bag for a change of clothes for your kids. Um, as with all my tutorials, there will be a blog post where you can get all the measurements. Um, and for this particular pattern, there will be a PDF download where you can print out the side panels of the duffel bag. Also, more information regarding tools and materials I use in all my tutorials. And of course, if you're not already, I would love it if you subscribed, hit that notification bell to be alerted of new and future tutorials, and of course, smash that like button as the kids like to say. Okay, so before we get started, this bag measures 12 inches by 6 inches tall by 6 inches wide. I'll be using a canvas material for the outer end lining to give it the bag some rigidity. If you're choosing to use a cotton for a less rigid fabric, I would consider using a medium to heavyweight interfacing and I am also using a size 5 zipper and I will be using a size 5 zipper. There will be a hidden pocket on the inside also where I'm using a size 3 zipper. So what you will need is two pieces for your outer fabric, two pieces for your lining fabric, and of course if you want to interface those then you would need to cut pieces of interfacing for those. I have two of the outer fabrics for the side panel and two for the lining of the side panel. This is my size 5 zipper. I got it at Pacana. I do have an unboxing, so if you want to check out where I got my zippers, you can check that in the information icon. I'm choosing to place some zipper tabs, but you don't have to. You can have your zipper measure the entire length of your bag, so I'm just doing this to be extra cute, but you don't have to, of course. And then I do have one piece that I made into a little strap, and that will be for little tabs that you can hold on to when you open and close your bag. I also am going to be doing a inside pocket. Now, if you're not ready for inside pockets yet, you can also skip this part and go on to the next step after this, but um, it's really handy to have that extra pocket on the inside, especially for like smaller items. And then I will have some long pieces that are for my strapping, and the straps should measure 34 inches each. You're gonna need two of them. So I'm just gonna take those pieces and I'm gonna fold them lengthways in half and press that. I am going to be making my straps. Of course, you can use pre-made straps or some webbing. Um, I do have a tutorial on different types of straps if you wanna check those out in the information icon again. Um, there are, you know, many different variations or you can just take a shortcut and just, you know, buy some webbing. I mean, no shame in that, you know what I'm saying? Um, so then after I've done that, I'm just going to sew down both sides of my straps and that will make it into a strap, <laughs> basically. Um, sorry, I, I sound super sick right now. I'm just gonna do a stitch down both sides. I usually like to bump my machine up to a three stitch length and do it about one eighth of an inch from the sides. So now we're gonna work on our zipper on the inside. Now, like I said before, if you don't wanna do this, you're not ready for this step, in your sewing journey, then of course you can skip forward. I do also have another tutorial for this specific pocket, just the pocket, that's it. So if you wanted to have a better look, maybe I'm going too fast for you. Again, I'll have that in the information icon. But I'm just gonna take my lining piece of that pocket and I'm gonna place that with the right sides together with my lining fabric of the bag. I measure down four inches and then I place my fabric on top one inch. So the fabric is three inches from the top. I liked it to do it that way just so that I could make sure that my fabric is placed perfectly. I created a quarter of an inch box with the length of my zipper. So however long you want your zipper to be. And then I place a line down that and I'm going to be sewing around the box. So along those drawn edges, and it's okay, I use pen. Um, you're not gonna see it, it's all gonna be hidden away. Um, but I will sew all the way around like I said, and then those little lines in the center are just markings for me where I know where to cut with my scissors. So like I said, if I'm going too fast for you, definitely check out that tutorial so that you can get um, a better grasp on this type of pocket. So I'm cutting down the center and then I'll cut diagonally towards the corners of this rectangle. I'm trying not to snip those little stitches because we don't want it to come apart. And then we'll just take that fabric and we're gonna push it through the pocket. Um, then we're gonna press that all nice and flat. 
and this is sort of just creating a perfect little space where we're gonna place our zipper. So again, I'm going to be using a size three zipper. If you're using just a regular zipper that you got over, you know, on Amazon or whatever, um, it's totally fine. It doesn't matter what zipper you're using. I just chose to go with zipper by the yard now, which is pretty exciting because you buy it by the yard and then you buy your poles separately. So it's pretty neat. Um, you should definitely check that out if you do a lot of zipper sewing, that's for sure. And I like how they have nice big poles on them. So again, I placed that zipper and perfectly centered it and then I just sewed all the way around the edge. Yes, you do see the zipper tape on the inside of the pocket, but because it's on the inside of the bag, it's not really an issue. You don't really notice it that much. We'll take the second piece of lining for this pocket and we'll place that on top of that little thing that we just made. I'm making sure that the right sides are together and we're going to sew all the way around that. We're actually going to be pushing the fabric for the lining of the bag out of the way and we're just going to be sewing with the lining from that pouch only. Um, you don't want to obviously put that lining attached to the lining of your bag. So that's why we're just pushing that fabric out of the way, sewing all the way around and that will create the little pouch. And all this stuff will be hidden inside the layers of your duffel bag so you're not going to see any of it. So it doesn't have to look beautiful. Now we're going to take our strapping and like I said it was 34 inches long and we're going to place that onto our first piece of outer fabric. Um, I will be measuring about two and a half inches from each side and then I'm just going to place a pin into my straps. I'm, I'm going to be sewing the straps on but I'm not going to be sewing them all the way up to the top of the duffel because if you did that then your straps would sort of go right up to the zipper and once you have your duffel bag done you'll understand but I'm only gonna be sewing up to about three inches away from the top so if you are using a directional fabric make sure that you are doing it in the right place basically <laughs> so like I said we're just gonna be doing up one side across and then back down and we'll do that with the other outer fabric as well so I'm only showing you one side of the duffel bag but you are going to be doing the exact same step with the other side of the duffel bag fabric so if you are using a matching thread then you can just sew right over top of those strap stitches and you won't notice these extra stitches so after that we're going to work on installing our zipper so like I said, I'm using a size five zipper. If you wanted to have it measure the full length of the bag, then just cut it so that it is the full length of it. But I am trying to be extra cute, like I said, and I'm going to be placing little tabs on the side. So I just took little strips, probably about two inches in length. Oh, actually probably like two and a half inches. I folded in the sides about a quarter of an inch, and then I'm just gonna place those folded in half on the edge. And then I just sewn right across. After that, I did trim my little tab pieces so that they were the exact width of my zipper, just so I didn't confuse myself. <laughs> and I really like these, these zippers. They don't hurt my needle when going across. I'm just using a regular needle. So even though they are a larger zipper, they are completely nylon and they are they're awesome because <laughs> I'm afraid of metal zippers. So next we're going to take one of the outer panels of our duffel bag, place the zipper with a zipper pull down, and then I'll take my lining piece and place that on top. And make sure that your fabrics are right sides together if your lining does have a right or wrong side. And then I'm just going to pin or clip right across the top. I am going to be measuring about a half inch away from each side. I'm going to mark that with some chalk and we're going to be sewing from marking to marking. We're not going to sew all the way across and this is because when we go to do the actual assembly of the duffel bag, um, you're going to need those little ends to be open. So make sure you're only sewing from each marking and those markings are a half an inch in. Very important, if you don't, you're gonna have more troubles in the next step. 
So I did switch over to a zipper foot. If you are new to zipper feet, you can check out the information icon. I do have a tutorial all about the zipper foot. I love it, it's great. It allows you to get nice and close to those zipper teeth. And like I said before, I did stop at that half inch mark. Um, next, we're going to add the other two panels, making sure that your zipper is facing the right side of your outer fabric. And then I will take the last lining panel, which is the one that had my little pocket in it, and I will place that with the right sides towards the right side of your outer fabric and lining that up. I will be doing a top stitch, but I'm going to save that till I get all of it assembled. I'm just going to, again, clip all the way down. I didn't mark here, but I just made sure that when I did do the sewing that I did it a half inch in. And you can kind of look back at the previous seam and make sure that you're in the right spot. So then after that, we will open up the bag and we will do that top stitch on both sides of that zipper. But now you can kind of see how the outside of your bag is looking. Super cute. I love this fabric so much. How cute is that? So just give your little zipper a test run, make sure everything's working good. Um, if you want to press your fabric at this point, just to make sure that, you know, that fold is nice and crisp. When you do your top stitch, you can do that. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. You just never know. <laughs> I do usually always have my iron going though, so. When I do do that top stitch, I will also be doing it a half an inch away from each end, just like that initial seam. And then again, I'm going to bump my machine up to a three stitch length to do my top stitching. I usually always work at a 2.5 if you're curious. And then after that, we can do the... Oh, yeah, okay, I know what we're doing next. We're going to take our right sides of the outer fabric and then the right sides of the lining fabric and place those together. We're going to sew along the bottom of each side. So first I'm just going to take my clips and make sure that everything is all nice and lined up. With this bag, it's a little bit important to have everything lined up, especially at this point where you want to have your straps line up so they kind of just all look like one on the bottom of your bag. We're going to sew across that, um, but we are going to be leaving a 4 inch gap in the bottom of our lining and that will be used for turning later on. So if you are using a larger zipper, the pattern calls for a half inch seam allowance, um, but you might want to bump it up to 3 quarters of an inch seam allowance if you are using a larger zipper like myself. Um, if you're using a normal size zipper, which would be like a size 3 or like a regular one that you would get, you know, on Amazon, then I would just stick with your half inch seam allowance. Um, if your side panels don't fit on because your bag is too big, then like I said, you can increase your seam allowance. If it's too small, then you can pick it out and then um, reduce your seam allowance. So, you know, once you make this bag a few times, you'll kind of work out those kinks, but you know, the first bag, it's never perfect. Mine wasn't perfect, so, you know, this is not my first attempt, <laughs> I assure you. So now we're gonna attach those side panels. I'm gonna take each side panel and I'm gonna place little notches right down the center, just so that I can have my center points marked. I'm gonna line up the top of the side panel with the zipper. And as you can see, I'm going to line that up with my little tab there. If I didn't have the tabs, then there would be a zipper there. I'm just going to place some clips. So it was really important to do that little half inch spacing at the beginning and end of your seams. I will um, tell you exactly why in one second. I just want to let you know that this is where you would place your little tab pieces, the little tab poles to help you open and close your bag. So you can just take that, fold it in half. I have about a two inch piece and then place that centered with your zipper with the folded piece inside. So the reason why we did that little half inch spacing is because we're not going to be sewing this with the lining at all. So you're going to be pushing the lining out of the way. We don't even want to touch it. So just make sure that you're sewing the side panel only on the outer fabric panel, if that makes sense. I'm going to line up the bottom of our little trapezoid side panel 
with the seam of the bottom of the bag and then I kind of like to just wing it I'll just put it in the machine and then you know as long as I have the the top centered and the bottom centered then you know everything else should just kind of fall into place you're gonna sew with a half inch seam allowance across the zipper down to the first corner and once you get to the corner you're just going to leave your needle in lift the presser foot pivot your machine or pivot the, the fabric um, so that you can get your right angle and then you're just going to bring the fabric over to line up with the other there you go see just like that <laughs> and then right down to the next corner and again adjust and then over the seam of the bag and then all the way back up to the zipper so we're going to do that exactly for the lining fabric also i'm only going to show you how i did the first um the first panel for the outer and the first panel of the lining um so you guys get the idea you'll have to do the exact same thing for the other side of your duffel making sure that you do not sew the fabric the lining fabric to the outer fabric so just push all of it out of the way <laughs> and lining up your center notches with your bottom of the bag and the zipper. So out of this whole entire project, this would probably be the hardest part. So hopefully I explained it nicely. I've looked at many different tutorials to try to find the best and easiest way to create a duffel bag because there's a lot of different versions such as a drop-in lining, um, which requires hand sewing and you know, like I'm not into that. <laughs> So I found this technique and I thought that this um, would be ideal. Okay, so now that you have all four of your panels on, as you can see, they're all completely separate. Now we can go over to the lining and then access that little hole that you left in the lining, returning, and then birth your bag. Oh my goodness, we are almost done. So at this point, you're just gonna, you know, check all your seams. You're gonna poke out your corners, make sure that you didn't miss anything, or that you didn't fall off the fabric at any point, and you know, some of your raw edges are showing. If you stick with the half-inch seam allowance, then um, it's pretty much foolproof. And then I'm gonna, of course, you know, press the bag afterwards. But after that, I just sewed up the uh, lining by turning the raw edges in and just sewed up that little hole. And then that's it. Now you have an adorable little bag. You open it up. We have a little hidden pocket in there for, you know, small items. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And of course, if you do, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share it with all your friends. You know, all that stuff helps to keep my patterns free for you guys because all that traffic just helps to fund my channel. And that's what I want to do. You know, fabric is very expensive and if I can help out the you know the new sewers to be able to save some money but still create some really adorable projects then that is what I'm going to do so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next tutorial